Hello, it's Larissa Ko. I'm going to show you how to use the grid method for drawing today. So the first step is to choose a picture. The one that I chose is a picture of my daughter. She was born with a cleft lip and palate, and so when she was just three months old, she had to have a major surgery. It was really difficult, but this picture is the day that we left. She finally started smiling again and it it was not only super happy for me to see but this picture just has always inspired me ever since it reminds me that i will smile again things are going to get better and i can even smile during the pain as well it's important i think to choose a picture that you're invested in because you're going to be spending a ton of time staring at this picture in detail it's helpful to print in grayscale if you're going to do a grayscale drawing that way you can focus a lot more on the lights and the darks instead of the colors so as you may have expected the first step of doing the grid method is to draw a grid you measure boxes it doesn't really matter how big the boxes are mine are one inch if your picture is smaller you probably want to do maybe half inch boxes or something even smaller than that but as long as they are straight and the width and height are the exact same it works out just fine I start by lining the ruler up along one side of the picture and I draw a dot every one inch then I line it up on the other side of the picture and do the same thing the reason I do that is because then I have two dots to connect instead of just having one dot. You don't want any of your lines to kind of your boxes to turn into V's or some to be wider or smaller than the others. You really need perfect squares for this technique to work. You do the same thing for the other direction. Draw one inch marks on the top and on the bottom and then connect the dots to create lines. I put letters across the top and numbers across the side. That's going to help me know where I'm at when I get to actually drawing this thing. I decided to take off some of the top and do a half inch box to take some of the more empty space out of my composition. And this is the part that requires a little bit of math. So I know that I want my drawing to have the same number of squares across as my image has and the same number of squares up and down as my image has. So I take the 12, which is the length of the paper that I'm drawing on, and I divide it by 7.5 because from top to bottom I had 7.5 squares that I wanted to use for my picture. If I were to use 1.6 inch boxes, then the image would go all the way from the bottom to the top of the page. I decided to make it a little simpler on myself and I just went for 1.5 inches. So here I am marking a mark every 1.5 inches. I do the same at the top and I do 1.5 inch squares from side to side as well. Remember to make squares the width and height need to be exactly the same. So you definitely wouldn't do 1.5 inches across and then one inch up and down because your squares would be distorted. I added in the letters across the top and the numbers across the side just like I had on my photograph. And now what I'm doing is just choosing some of the more tricky parts that I might struggle with a bit when I'm drawing, and I'm drawing X's on those portions. The more you break something down, the easier it will be to replicate, and so that's what these X's are for. It just gives me some more reference points to figure out where to put things when I'm actually drawing the image in my grid. And I draw the same X's on my actual page that I'm drawing on. 
So here is the part that takes forever. You're going to go through each box and create the same things within that box that you see on your reference photo. You'll see that I don't typically just go box by box. If you want to, you definitely could do that, but it's just not my style. I just kind of jump around and by the end I try to get everything into the boxes but I certainly do not just go in order and fill an entire box and then move on to the next box. What you're looking for here is where the lines intercept the grid. So for example if you see a line that is about halfway up in your grid you're gonna put your line about halfway up if it's a little less than halfway you do yours a little less than halfway etc another thing to really look for is the angles so the angles are gonna be the same from your reference image to your drawing some boxes don't really have a lot going on but even in those boxes, look really closely to find shadows. Sometimes the shadows don't look like they would be part of the drawing, but they're so important. So make sure you outline where you're going to put your shadows. You can see that sometimes I sort of color those in a little bit already so that I, get, I don't get confused when I'm done. And you just want to keep going until all of the boxes match what you have in the the reference photo. Here is my finished line drawing. It is all ready now for me to move on to shading. 